So here we're going to go over glycerol catabolism. Now, glycerol is a structure that is found within lipids. And catabolism is the process of breaking something down. When we think about metabolism, metabolism is all the processes that are going to occur in a cell. Whether it's breaking something down or it's building something, metabolism is the word we use to encompass all the reactions that occur in a cell. Now, metabolism can be broken down into two components, catabolism and anabolism where catabolism is where we break something down and anabolism is where we build something up. The way we can remember which is which is we can think about the prefix cat and picture a cat breaking something down. We can easily imagine a cat ripping apart a pillow and breaking it down into its fiber components. So if we can remember that catabolism is breaking something down, we can automatically assume that anabolism is going to be the opposite of building something up. So here, we're going to go over glycerol catabolism, but where is this glycerol coming from? So here we have a triacylglycerol, which is just one example of what a lipid could look like. Remember that a lipid is simply what we also refer to as a fat. And fats and lipids are made up of glycerol and fatty acids. So here we actually have a fatty acid. This is also a fatty acid, and this is also a fatty acid. Fatty acids can have different uh, number of saturated bonds, unsaturated bonds. They could have uh, a different length of hydrocarbon chains. This is just an example. So in this example, we have a triacylglycerol, where this backbone over here is going to be considered the glycerol backbone. And then we, since we have three fatty acids, we have tri, tri meaning three. So this is a triacylglycerol, which is just one example of what a lipid could look like. And we're going to break this triacylglycerol down into its components of glycerol, and the fatty acids. Here we have three fatty acids, so we'll get the three fatty acids. And we're going to break it down using water and lipases. So lipases are specific to which bonds that are breaking, but we're not going to go into detail over here about that. Here we're just going to understand that we utilize lipases to get glycerol and fatty acids. And now let's take a look at what happens to this glycerol. Now the first step in glycerol breakdown is phosphorylation via a kinase. So remember, when we're using a kinase, we're going to be using ATP and ADP, and it's going to be a phosphorylation reaction because kinases are responsible for transferring a phosphate group. So what happens is that on ATP, uh, it is converted to ADP because we take one of those phosphates and add it to the third carbon of glycerol to get glycerol 3-phosphate. After that phosphorylation, we're looking at an oxidation reduction reaction where glycerol 3 phosphate is going to be oxidized and NAD plus is going to be reduced to get NADH and H plus and dihydroxyacetone phosphate. And the enzyme catalyzing this reaction is glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate dehydrogenase. Dehydrogenases are a very common enzyme seen in oxidation reduction reactions. And we can remember that this is glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase because it is simply in the reactant's name. So as a result, we're going to see an oxidation happening in glycerol 3-phosphate, and we're going to see a carbonyl form over here. Now, we have this carbonyl, and we get dihydroxyacetone phosphate, but if we recall, we have seen this structure before in glycolysis. In glycolysis, we have dihydroxyacetone phosphate and it is converted into glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate via an isomerization reaction and simply which we, we take that carbonyl and hydroxyl and we switch the positions of the carbonyl and the hydroxyl to get that carbonyl uh, on that terminal carbon to get glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate because this glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate can go further into glycolysis and be broken down into pyruvate. Now, before we get into the details of that, let's quickly overview what happened. 
The reason for that phosphorylation in that initial step was so we could get glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate because glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate has a phosphate group. So that was the purpose of the phosphorylation. Then we had to do an oxidation reduction reaction to get that carbonyl. And then what did we do? We simply switched the position of the carbonyl with the hydroxyl and we got glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. And now that glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate is going to go further into glycolysis and be converted into 1 3 bisphosphoglycerate, 3 phosphoglycerate, 2 phosphoglycerate, phosphoenol pyruvate, and then finally pyruvate. And through that process, we get another NADH. We get ATP here, we get ATP here. And what's going to happen to that pyruvate? It's going to be converted into acetyl CoA. And it's going to enter the TCA cycle where it's going to produce FADH2, NADH, and GTP. What's going to happen to the FADH2 and NADH? It's going to enter the electron transport chain and through oxidative phosphorylation, we're going to see the production of ATP. So what was the whole purpose of glycerol uh, catabolism? The purpose of glycerol catabolism is to gain energy. When do we want to use glycerol catabolism? Well, we're going to utilize it when we are low on glucose. Because when we are low on glucose, we're going to have to use an alternative energy pathway. And that alternative energy pathway is glycerol breakdown. And we can also use these fatty acids in beta oxidation. And that is essentially glycerol catabolism. It's an alternative energy production mechanism.